Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at an edition of Windows 10 that is unlike any other. This edition of Windows 10, known as Windows 10 Team, is really not publicly available to download, and it is a really unique version of Windows 10 designed to run specifically on the Surface Hub. If you don't know, the Surface Hub is kind of like Microsoft's version of the Smart Board. It's an all-in-one touchscreen display that has its own computer built inside of it, and it's really meant to be used in education or business environments. So they made this edition of Windows 10 to run specifically on that hardware. However, in this video, we're going to take a look at it and really breaking it down and seeing what's really different from a standard edition of Windows 10. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you cannot publicly download this, which begs the question, how was I able to download it? Well, using a website known as UUP Dump, you can download really any edition of Windows 10 or Windows 11 that exists right now. So really all I had to do to download this was search team in the UUP Dump search. And here is a majority of the versions of Windows 10 team. And I could go ahead and just click on this and select Windows team and then download the command prompt file that will download and create of course that ISO. And so in this video we're going to be installing and of course taking a look at Windows 10 team. Now one thing I should mention is if you're doing this yourself you cannot use easy install. Easy install will totally mess up the installation as I'll show you in a minute. You have to go ahead and select I'll install the operating system later and then go ahead and add the ISO afterwards. I'll tell you why in a minute. So of course this looks like our typical Windows installation except until we get to where we enter the product key. Now, most people would typically just skip entering a product key because they're installing Windows 10 in a virtual machine, so why would they need a key? However, if we don't have a key, it will present us with an error. Windows cannot find the Microsoft license terms. Please make sure the installation sources are valid and restart the installation. However, if we don't have a key, we can't get past that. So through another video, I went ahead and just found a key. So if you're taking a look at this build yourself, here is the key that you can use. This is the key that I found on NT Dev's video and it worked for me. So go ahead and take a look at that. And if you're doing this yourself, use that key. But that key will bypass that error and get us straight into installing Windows 10 Team. Now we can go ahead and select our unallocated space and go ahead and install Windows. It's that simple. Once the installation has went ahead and finished its installation, it will go through and boot like standard Windows 10. Obviously, I believe on the Surface Hub, that Windows logo would be replaced with Surface Hub or the Microsoft Surface logo. I haven't ever really seen the Surface Hub in real life, so I'm not totally sure how that would work. Although I would assume it'd just be a standard UEFI sort of thing where the logo changes based on the manufacturer's settings. This is the first difference that we'll notice here. We have our Windows logo with just a moment. Typically that would be the like little loading screen, that little loading animation, and it would say just a moment. But that isn't how Windows 10 Team is. Anywhere it says just a moment, it does have that Windows logo. I would like to disable Cortana because I don't need that, as I would like to walk through the setup. Right here, it seems like your typical Windows 10 Home setup. However, we can go ahead and go through it, and we'll see that it's not like our typical Windows 10 setup. This is where things get a little bit different. If you have a domain controller on your network or an Azure local directory, whatever they call that, you can go ahead and enter that here. For example, you could just do Windows slash Windows if that was your NetBIOS name. However, since I don't have a domain controller on my network at the minute, we're just going to go ahead and skip that. So here we can go ahead and enter a name that people will see when they want to connect to the device. So this will just be Surface Hub. And then the name that is used to join the device to the domain, I guess would be more similar to a computer name. Going ahead and clicking next, we can choose whether or not we want to join this device to the domain. Again, we can use Active Directory Domain Services, the Azure Active Directory, or create a local admin account. This is just like creating a standard local account, and except this time we cannot skip the password. We have to go ahead and enter a password and we can't skip it. Again, we see that just a moment little animation thing, and we should be brought into the home screen after it reboots again. All right, so we booted it back up. We need to get a few more things polished, and then Windows will be all ours. And this is where we see those changes. The first thing we'll see is getting things ready for the next session. This 
is our lock screen. We do have information on the Surface Hub, for example, the actual flight name, the actual name, the machine name, our last cleanup error, and the IP address if, if for some reason someone has to connect to this machine. Because remember, this isn't meant to be ran on desktops. This is meant to be ran on the Surface Hub, which is meant to be in a business environment. So that's why we have that IP address right there easily available. All right, so now that we're actually on the lock screen, this is it. We do have a Windows logo at the bottom where it just opens up our start menu, but it of course creates a new session. But now that we're already in a session, we don't have to go back to the lock screen. Basically everything in the lock screen, what it said would just bring you into the desktop environment. So let's go ahead and try to install VMware tools because something interesting actually happens when we try to do that. So if we go ahead and go to all apps and file explorer, which this is a UWP file explorer, which is actually very similar to the one that is seen inside of Windows 10X before it became Windows 11. So here is our setup 64. We can go ahead and try and run this, but it's going to ask us to search for an app in the store for this task. This is an executable file that Windows simply doesn't know how to run and this would run on any standard version. So I have no clue what's going on there, but let's take a look at the desktop environment. Here we have our Surface Hub name. This is the first name that we put in, not the second one. We have our start menu. We have our task view. We have an end session button. We have our notification tray. We have the time, which is the standard one from Windows 10 and our volume settings controls things. So let's take a look at that start menu because it's nothing like anything we've seen before. Here, this is like our live tiles. So this is where you would quickly and easily access different things in the operating system. So like if you could, you wanted to pin something, I think you can actually unpin apps. I'm not really sure. All apps, this is like the left side of your Windows 10 start menu where you have all of the apps pre-installed, which there's really not a lot. There's no Windows accessories. There's none of that. This is all you would get my meetings and files which is something that you would need to sign in for and of course the end session button this is where it will clear all of your files off of the surface hub and then get ready for the next person so let's take a look around everything opens like windows 8 it all acts like a windows 8 app so basically it's full screen and exit it you have to grab at the top and swipe down why? Because this was really meant for the Surface Hub. This was not supposed to be installed on anything else, which is why it's all touchscreen oriented. Something I find really interesting about this version is that it comes by default with Word 365. And actually, if we go ahead into here and take a look at our settings, it says licenses are up to date. So it comes with a fully activated copy of Microsoft Office 365 for basically free because we activated it using that product key, which is really interesting. And that's the same thing for Excel, PowerPoint, Word, anything that comes in Office 365. It's all activated, it's all ready to go, and I think that is pretty cool. Taking a look at the top bar, we of course have the name of the actual app. We have this, which will take a screenshot and open up the screenshot in Microsoft Whiteboard on the opposite side. We also have this button, which will put the app in full screen or take it out of full screen. That's, we have no X, maximize or minimize buttons. Let's take a look in settings and open settings. This is actually a really locked down edition. Why? Because it will ask us for an administrator username and password. Now, I believe that the account we made is win. So here, this looks a little bit different from our standard Windows settings. We have Surface Hub which is very different from what we've typically seen up here. So yeah, overall, this is like a Windows 10X kind of Windows 10 combined thing. This is a really cool version of Windows that I didn't even know existed, and I would be really eager to see how Windows 11 handles a Windows 11 team mode. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos and device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.